thank you very much for attending the hommikust. Good morning, everyone. I uh, started to share my slides. I hope you can see them. Please uh, tell me if you can't. So uh, my topic, indeed, um, is about Finno-Ugrian studies and uh, more precisely about the history of the Hungarian language. So I am currently working in the University of Vienna in this research project funded by the Austrian Academy of Sciences. Uh, and the aim of this project is a more precise reconstruction of uh, the phonological development from the Uralic or Finno-Ugric proto-language to Hungarian. I have to stress that this topic, Hungarian historical phonology, has a very long research history. So there is a lot has been published on the history of Hungarian, but there is still much to be done, especially uh, regarding loanwords. Uh, I'm uh, especially interested in loanwords from Iranian languages, uh, since uh, they have not received as much attention as some other loanword layers. And um, also uh, the shared vocabulary between hung the vocabulary that Hungarian shares with the um, Khanti and Mansi languages of Siberia is also of special importance to me. But uh, in this presentation, I will concentrate on loanwords as I think they make an interesting case study. So in the study of the phonology of loanwords, there are specific challenges and problems that need to be taken into account. So I'm um, concentrating on the Alanic loanword layer today. So Alanic is or was an Iranian language. Uh, more about that in a minute, but uh, this is an interesting case study. I think the Alanic uh, Hungarian context because it's a um, case study of prehistoric language contact, but uh, something that happened at late prehistoric period. So during the latter part of the first millennium, which is prehistoric from the point of view of Hungarian and from the point of view of Alanic too, but which is obviously a period of time when we already have uh, written sources from various parts of Europe and Asia. So we have indirect written evidence. And these uh, loanwords, they, um, they have impacts on the study of both Hungarian and Iranian historical linguistics. So very briefly, some general remarks about the history of Hungarian. So this is a Finno-Ugric, Finno-Ugrian language. So Finno-Ugric and Uralic, uh, well, they can be used as synonyms. It's a long story. So now I speak of Uralic, which, which basically means the same as Finno-Ugric. Uh, and uh, Hungarian does not have closely related languages. So it's nearly a Uralic language, but uh, the situation is very different from Finnish or Estonian, for example, that they, that does not have any close relatives within that family. And uh, it is the best documented Uralic language. So the written history starts roughly 1000 years ago, but the situation is in a way paradoxical that uh, despite this good documentation, there is a lot of um, many of the phonological developments are poorly known. So those developments took place before the first written sources mostly, but uh, it's it's a, in a way peculiar situation that even though it is the best attested language in the family, it's clearly not the language whose development would be the most well known. And about language context of Hungarian, so there are several layers of loan words, so different layers of Iranian loans, which were acquired in the East European steppe before the Hungarians, um, before the Hungarian language arrived in Central Europe in early Middle Ages. Then there is a much bigger layer of Turkic loan words, which is actually even more important for the study of historical phonology, but uh, there has been more work done on that than on the Iranian loans. And then there are various later loan word layers, um, words borrowed, for example, from the Slavic languages and from German in Central Europe. Uh, and here is a family tree showing the traditional idea of, I mean, showing the Uralic language family with this Ugric node, with the traditional idea of Hungarian forming the Ugric node together with Khanti and Mansip. And here you can see uh, the geographical distribution of the Uralic languages, Hungarian being here in the Central Europe, 
And if we compared it with this reconstructed situation, this map was published in an article that I co-authored recently about the history of the Uralic family. We, we can assume, I mean, it's commonly assumed that Hungary was originally spoken somewhere here near the Ural Mountains, and there was this long migration westwards. And this is important from the point of view of loan words as the contacts between the Iranian languages and Hungarian took place here in the steppe. So very briefly about methodology. So when one does etymology, when one does research on the history of words, one obviously needs to take the history of sounds. So phonology, historical phonology into account and also the other way around, maybe self-evident, but still word stating. And in long word research, especially in research on so um, prehistorical language context, the knowledge of historical phonology of the both contact languages is essential. And what is essential, what is uh, especially for, uh, important here is the uh, idea of sound substitution, which basically means that when words are taken over from one language to another, the, um, the sound systems of the languages, contact languages are usually not identical, and then the foreign sounds are uh, substituted some way. And it's usually assumed that uh, it's a phonetically nearest equivalent or phonetically the nearest sound that is used as the substitution, but there are also other, other um, ways. Uh, we'll have some examples in a in a moment, but the main thing is that uh, usually these sound substitutions have some kind of uh, pattern, so they are usually systematical, which is important because if we have uh, different kind of substitution patterns, then we often can uh, distinguish different layers of loan words. But it's an interesting methodological question that how much regularity can be ex expected, because uh, study of loan words is different from the study of inherited words, because um, In the um, so historical comparative linguistics, the idea of regular sound change and regular sound correspondences is essential, but the situation with loan words is uh, somewhat somewhat different. So it's uh, debated whether whether this kind of regularity really can be can be uh, expected. And about Iranian loan words in general, very briefly. So the main thing is that there are several layers, and we are now concentrating on the Alanic layer. So Alanic is, um, well, either the ancestor of the Ossetic language, or it's very, or it was very closely related to Ossetic at least. So Ossetic is spoken today in, uh, in the Republic of Georgia, in the South Ossetian region, and also uh, in North Ossetia, which is uh, part of Russia. But we know also from historical sources that the area where Ossetic and the ancestral from Alanic was spoken, it was much, much larger. And why is it important to do research on this topic? Well, there is a long research history in this topic, and there is already this uh, monograph by Hannes Schöld from uh, uh, 1925, which is a very good one, and which actually has very good substitution rules that explain uh, the phonology of these laws quite well. Uh, but uh, it's a problem that not all the subsequent um, research has taken these uh, rules into account. And there are various kinds of ideas and views about the phonology of the Alanic loans in Hungarian. And that's why it's good to have a fresh look and rehabilitate some of the old ideas and also present some new, new results. So uh, here just this map shows well that Iranian languages, including the ancestors of Ossetic, were spoken in Eastern European steppe. And here is, uh, well, a family tree of Iranian languages, which many shows that there are a lot of them, Ossetic being here in the eastern branch of the family, Ossetic and Alanic listed here separately. And now we go finally to the topic itself, so to the loan words. Here is just a comparison of the sound system, so a reconstructed sound system for late Proto-Hungarian and the sound system of Alanic. This is uh, the sound system of Alanic as it is known from uh, later medieval documents. There is some written at the station. Not much, but some, uh, some kind of literary tradition. So this is from uh, 
time that is slightly later than when these contacts occurred, but we can assume that the Lowell system of prehistoric Alenic was probably quite similar as this. So this is the, yeah, the vowel system, not the complete sound systems of these languages. And OK, now finally, the loan words themselves. So uh, there is this old idea already suggested by Hannes Schöld that there is this nice regularity that uh, Hungarian A, so this sound which is written with the E or E letter in modern Hungarian, but which is an open vowel, so similar as Finnish A, it, um, is used to substitute this Alanic low vowel a, ah, which in modern ascetic is, uh, well, it can be perhaps described as something between Finnish a ah and a. Ah. So here we have, in any case, we have this nice regularity, many examples which manifest this substitution. These were probably phonetically quite similar sounds. And, and what is very interesting that we have this regular pattern. But, well, not all loan words. Um, follow this regular pattern and that's well now something something new or well this shows that it's still worth doing research on this old topic too that there are some loans or possible loans that do not fit this pattern uh, in addition to these that I mentioned here in this slide there are also some um, more problematic examples but for example there is the Hungary word for Blackberry seder, which uh, does not have the open a ah, but closed e, which uh, to these days is only found in dialects of Hungarian, but used to be more widespread. So clearly, this has a different vowel. And uh, if we assume that the Alanic word had the a ah vowel that the word in the previous slide had, then this is an exception. But well, here the easy solution. Well, different solutions are available, but one solution is that this really is not um, not necessarily an Alanic loan word because the Ossetic word. So based on this Ossetic word, this kind of Alanic form can perhaps be reconstructed, but this Ossetic word does not have a good etymology. So it is possible that these words are actually parallel loan words from some other source into Ossetic and Hungarian. And also these are uh, Ossetic forms, so I didn't mention, but there are two dialects of Ossetic or two main dialects, Iron and Igor. And here we see that the Iron and Igor forms actually have these irregular relationships that this doesn't actually reflect this kind of ah sound regularly. So this word for Blackberry can then be, uh, well, it does not really count because it's in this discussion of uh, regularity because because of this. And then there are these two words, the Hungarian word for rich and this uh, word for some kind of uh, weed or bush, which are quite clearly loans from Alanic. But here we have the back vowel a instead of a that we would expect. And here, well, a very easy solution, but something that, uh, as far as I know, has not been suggested is that because of this word initial the sound, so this velar spirant, this uh, a ah was then perceived differently by Hungarian speakers. So it's we know from modern Ossetic that the this a ah sound is uh, susceptible to influence from neighboring consonants. So it is realized in different ways in different environments. So for example, after this this kind of sound, it probably sounded different to the Hungarian speakers, and that's the easy solution. So now we have a nice rule that explains this difference. The problem is only that we have only two examples, which is, uh, well, but it's a typical situation in uh, with this kind of loanword layers where we don't have that many etymologies. But then if we look at the long, uh, words for Hungary and long A corresponds to A in Ossetic, uh, and uh, earlier A in Alanic, which was originally a long vowel, we also have this nice, um, regular pattern, which is supported by at least one new etymology that can be suggested, where we find the similar substitution. So here we also have some examples, uh, which can uh, perhaps also be explained. So, uh, well, there is this word for glass, where the dialects show the ex accepted, expected vowel, where probably the 
forming standard Hungarian is secondary. And then, well, there is uh, one example where, uh, well, it's very difficult to, or not methodologically, not very sound to uh, suggest rules based on one etymology, but there is a word for sword where you can have a velar consonant here in the beginning of the word, which might have influenced the way this ossetic or alanic vowel was perceived. But why is this important? Well, first of all, uh, because the sound that is uh, open, uh, sorry, long a in modern Hungarian was used to substitute alanic a. It has some kind of implications for Hungarian historical phonology. So we can assume that perhaps this was uh, originally, or well, at the time of borrowing, a more open vowel. So what is now, um, well, long a, so a mid vowel, it probably was more open at the time of borrowing, which would make this substitution. So a uh, taken over as a uh, phon phonetically plausible, but it's also possible that this is a system based substitution. So since, uh, um, since the short a uh, was used to substitute the alanic a uh, sound, it's well then possible that because these two, two vowels a uh, and a, uh, the Hungarian speakers perceived them differently. I wanted to have a different system to substitute them, then they use this long a. But actually, this is something where further research is needed because uh, not everything is quite quite clear. But this seems to support the idea. I mean, it's a plausible idea that this was a that this kind of long open vowel existed in Hungarian at this time, which would be uh, important since uh, it is not quite clear when when the um, this kind of vowel lengthening in Hungarian took place. So the uh, emergence of long vowels uh, is uh, not completely well understood. And another thing why this is important, so the substitution patterns that I described is that we, since we have this nice pattern in Alanic loan words, we have other Iranian loans, so loans that are clearly from some Iranian language. And since they do not show the same pattern, so for example, the word for castle, var, word for market, varshar, uh, the old word for fox, ravas, will it's it sometimes has been suggested that these also belong to the Alanic layer, but since these do not fit the substitution pattern, it's more probable that these are loan words from some other Iranian language and uh, probably older loan words. And uh, just very briefly before I stop, uh, I mentioned that these loan words have implications of both uh, Hungarian and Iranian historical phonology, and it is interesting that um, regarding the uh, Ossetic or Alanic historical phonology, there is, for example, this issue of Ossetic de corresponding to two different sounds in Hungarian in loan words, and it is uh, has been suggested that um, that well, I mean, there are two different Proto-Iranian sources for Ossetic de. And so they come both for proto iranian voiced de and voiceless te. And it is uh, possible that the, the reflexes at Alanic times were different. It has been suggested independently from the loan words here, but actually the loan words do sub support this kind of scenario that uh, there might have been this kind of change from uh, stop to spire and at some point of Alanic. Uh, so the main thing here is that these loan words also bring some nice evidence for Iranian historical phonology. So wrap, wrapping up, uh, well, long word research can be useful for the history of both languages. There are regular patterns and exceptions can be explained by some kind of rules. Uh, and uh, the substitution rules of patterns, well, they open views in the study of other long word layers and contacts. Well, the contacts can be helpful in uh, establishing relative chronology in historical phonology. So uh, uh, thank you for your attention.